ShireSociety.com. Um, in Switzerland, the people can uh, activate a proposed amend amendment through a referendum, okay? And I think the provinces, uh, the cantons in Switzerland have a way to do that too. Here in this country, the people, neither the people nor the states can initiate, initiate a new constitutional amendment. That has to be passed by Congress first, then they send it out to the states for ratification. This is a, a total block on, on changing some things that we needed to change. Um, I mean, the thing was a rigged game. I call the Constitution a coup d'etat, a sham from the beginning. The only reason we have a semblance of any freedom 225 years later is because of the Bill of Rights. As weak as they were, and as limited as they were, and as few as they were, at least they've been speed bumps in the road of tyranny, maybe a pothole or two. Otherwise, it would have been a superhighway since 1785, and you know, there would be no free state project anywhere because we'd be li living under a really totalitarian European-style state long ago. So I'm very grateful to uh, Patrick Henry and, and fellows of, of that nature passing or, or agitating for the uh, Bill of Rights. Um, however, they've been interpreted by the Supreme Court over the years to practically nothingness. You know, even the Heller case uh, for the Second Amendment, finally, finally they give us in 2008 an individual right, you know, interpretation. But we can, you know, limit that right uh, because of, you know, unusual and dangerous weapons, you know, whatever those are. So the whole thing is a rigged game, and I, I'm, it, it angers me that good Republican conservative types that are 80 percent, you know, our, our uh, direction, are still, well, what about foreign policy, or what about this, or what about this? We just need to go back to the Constitution. It's like, no. We're living under the Constitution. I don't think there's anything the feds are doing today that cannot be justified under the Constitution, especially with a compliant uh, judiciary. So we're under the Constitution. You know, what do we do from here? And this is why I wrote the book in 97. And after that, I had the idea for a free state movement and started my novel, and then that was parallel de development with Jason Soren's idea uh, at the same time. So, you know, localism and uh, agora society and all that, th th these are ideas whose time has come, but man, we are, we are late in the game on this because our powers that be are, are quite entrenched, popularly supported, and they're well-funded. Okay, there are a lot of people that don't want what we want and don't want what we have and are going to resist us. So I'll get into what are some ways that maybe we can use uh, the system against itself. There is a phrase which recurs in our national documents. The literature of our story as a people which points to the source of our belief in individual freedom. You know, people say the Constitution is, is a uh, bulwark of liberty. And I say, on what evidence? The national motivations of its, fa of its framers? the secrecy of the Federal con uh, Convention, the guile of its paper handcuffs, checks and balances, the interpretive powers given to the Supreme Court, the magnitude of implied powers available, the fraud, mischief and deviousness of the Constitution's promotion, the slanderous abuse of sincere anti-federalists, the deceitful assuagement of the people, the forced shrill haste of the ratification schedule, the deluded, grudging, perfunctory Bill of Rights, the brute extortion of sovereign Rhode Island. Rhode Island wanted to stay out. Congress voted on a trade embargo of Rhode Island in 1790. And Rhode Island knuckled under like a month later. And finally, in the 220-something in the year of the Constitution's ex execution, as Lysander Spooner said, I mean, the Constitution has either authorized such a government as we have had or has been powerless to prevent it. I mean, he said that in 1870. Either the Constitution set it up or is too weak to prevent it. So it, it's time for conservative folks to like wake up and get past this whole parchment worship. Uh, you know, good people like, thanks, Bill. Especially the scholars. I mean, especially, uh, you know, Judge Napolitano for, for a good example. Uh, he spoke at Liberty Forum uh, 2010. And uh, I handed him a copy of this, and he goes, you already sent me this. And I said, yeah, Judge, maybe we'll read the second one, you know. In his book in 2006, he says, 
the torturing and twisting of the plain language of the Constitution in order to permit the expansion of the, of the federal powers has resulted in the loss of liberty. Tortured and twisting of the plain language. Then he goes on to say, the Commerce Clause was written to keep commerce between the states regular, not to enable Congress to regulate every aspect of the movement of goods from one state to another. So the Constitution we have today is nowhere near the beautiful, balanced document or in instrument of limited government. I mean, is he kidding me? Plain language, twisted later by, by Marshall and Hamilton and all that? Hamilton wrote in the twisted language, wrote in the vagueness, wrote in the loopholes to be filled. This was all on purpose. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at shiresociety.com.